The origins of geometry can be traced back to what are known as a class of text Sulva Sutra texts. The Sulva Sutra texts form a part of what is known as Kalpa Sutra. If one were to look at uh, the way the knowledge system has been classified, it starts with four Vedas. In fact, even in uh, one of the Upanishads, we have a passage which says Rigvedo, Ajurveda, Samavedo, Atharvavedaha. Having listed this Vedas, it says Shiksha, Kalpo, Vyakranam, Viruktam, Chando, Jyotisha. So, this Kalpa Sutras consists of Sulva Sutra, Dharma Sutra, Grihya Sutra and so on. So, the Shulva Sutras are basically the texts which deal with geometry. These texts have been composed primarily to assist the Vedic priests, so in the construction of the sacrificial altars. So, different kinds of sacrificial altars have been prescribed for different desires which people have. So, Ratha Chakra Chitan Chinvita, Shena Chitan Chinvita and so on. There are various names which have been listed in Ajurveda. So, this uh, Chakra Chiti means a sort of, sort of uh, circular in shape, something can be semicircular in shape. Some Chitis, Chiti basically refers to a sacrificial altar which is made up of by piling bricks. So, this Chiti can be in the form of Shena, Shena refers to a falcon. So, these Chitis have to be made in the form of falcon. See, one of the constraints which have been put in the uh, construction of Chiti is the area has to be of a specific measure. So, you say that the area of this falcon bird which is finally arrived at, so should be say some let us say 200 square meters. Now, you also impose the condition that it should be made up of only some 200 bricks. So, now you have a situation wherein there is a constraint that the area has to be of this measure and the shape has to be this and you have to actually have this chiti in different layers. In fact, there is also prescription that if you perform the sacrifice in the first year, the chiti height has to be up to knee. So, janu the ghranchin vita. Then in the next year, if you have to do next time, so it has to be up to the hip, uru the ghranchin vita and so on, which means you cannot think of manufacturing a brick which will be one and a half feet in height. So, the bricks will be only of 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches, whatever you want to have, you can have. But the point is, these bricks have to make this height and uh, it will all be basically designed considering the person who performs the sacrifice. So, this uh, height of the knee will, will vary from person to person, they will take all that measure into account. So, this is all done with specific purpose with specific person. So, this is how the bricks design had been done in those days. So, now that there is an area and there is a certain shape, so put in two and the number of bricks will also be specified. See per layer you can have only some 200 bricks. So, this has to be made in the form of rhombus, made in the form of square, made in the form of triangle, made in the form of uh, uh, rectangle, all that has to be done. So, for instance, falcon they have body, they have wings, they have tail, they have head, all that. So, you have to manufacture bricks, so fabricate bricks, so which will satisfy all these constraints. So, once you do this, so you have um, to find out the value of root 2, you have to find out the value of root 3. So, all those things have been integrated into this process and that is why we have a detailed description in Sulva Sutras uh, regarding the values of root 2, values of root 3. So, all these things have been uh, there. <coughs> so, now so, as far as this chiti is concerned, the very term means putting together, chayanam means bringing together. So, chayanam is basically bringing together various kinds of bricks to create a certain shape for a specific purpose to fulfill a certain desire in order to make this sacrifice a successful measure. So, to give the fruit which is desired by the one who wants to perform the sacrifice. So, the Sulva Sutra text starting with uh, various uh, formulas, so finding out the east west direction, so all that actually involves geometry. So, it will start with how to consider, how to construct a perpendicular direction, so how to find out the east west direction. So, the Vedi, so the sacrificial um, place itself, okay, so which is a much larger area, so that dimension will be specified. 
then within that you will have various kinds of smaller sacrificial altars. So, you will also have a certain constraint uh, wherein you may have to create a certain altar, so which is circular in shape, so for doing this ahutis. So, some other will be in semicircular in shape, some other will be square in shape. So, now you put the constraint that whether it is semicircular, whether it is circular, whether it is square, so all of them should have the same area. So, it is a question of now transforming a square into a circle of the same area. So, this actually gives rise to the uh, uh, Vedic priests trying to find out the value of pi. So, this geometry and uh, mathematics and algebra, so they are all sort of quite uh, closely connected and uh, there are also there are various Sulva Sutras in fact. So, Katyayana Sulva Sutra, Manava Sulva Sutra, Bodhayana Sulva Sutra. So, these various Sulva Sutras, so they more or less they deal with the same kind of topics, but there will be some kind of variants also. In fact, if one were to find out the value of root n, there is a very interesting thing which has been given in Sulva Sutra, Katyayana Sulva Sutra for instance. They are very ingenious method of finding out the value of root n. So, you draw a triangle and then you make some measurement. So, the sides of the triangles are constructed in such a way that uh, the perpendicular dropped from the vertex to the base gives you the value of root n. So, this is a very interesting thing uh, which fascinated me as I was looking into some of these texts. So, in short one can say that uh, the origins of geometry in India has been in connection with the construction of various sacrificial altars.